Hi, so in this segment we're going to be talking all about daisies, how to build daisies, how to layer them out, and it's the beginning part, so we're just mapping out the, uh, the movement of how the daisies are going to be framing the bottom part of the canvas, and they're going to be pulling our, uh, out our foreground so that the viewer would have this uh, beautiful depth and perspective. Uh, in terms of the materials, uh, we're going to be using this one little brush. It's a smallish, kind of squarish, flat, ovally brush. It doesn't have to be new. It could be your old little brush, but it needs to be small enough so when we scoop out a big chunk of paint, we could still have, uh, we could still be able to create small brush strokes, but very chunky and very juicy. So that's basically your orientation, you know, like smallish brush, so you could scoop up a nice amount of paint and it could still give you a nice smallish brush stroke. Uh, in terms of the colors, we are using our titanium white, our cadmium yellow okra. Uh, we will be using a bit of, uh, uh, of violet, a little bit of a purple color maybe if you need to. And. Um, I would like to talk to you about uh, this particular exercise that we'll be entering uh, into in a, in a few seconds. Um, it's this creating, this creating the structure of the daisy, which will be starting out with the, the yellow part of the flower. And uh, like I will show you how we're going to be creating that yellow part, how we're going to be starting up with that particular uh, area of the flower because it's going to give us some angles. I want us to be able to place our daisies on a certain angle so they're not all looking the same like you took a stamp and you stamp them, stamp, 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 stamp them. So here I'm showing you how we can have this imaginary line that will be going helping us to place the flower on a certain angle so the the yellow ovaly thing or half of a sphere that i'm creating or the circles these are the middle part of the daisy okay and it, it helps us to uh, create a slightly different angle and how we'll look at the flower maybe there's a wind blowing or like they got one stuck with the other somehow and they got a little bit uh, uh, on the, you know, like switched their angle a bit. So if we have a circle round part that is like really, really circle, so you will be able how to see how the uh, white area, white parts of the petals, how they are structured around the yellow, right? If we have a half sphere, that means it's like we're looking at the flower from the side. Half sphere of the yellow middle part of the flower, meaning the flower is a bit on the side, and the, accordingly, uh, you have the white petals are kind of hanging on a certain angle and a certain way. And if you have the yellow part round, round, it's like a little sun, like looking right straight at you, and all the petals are gonna be like just really showing, more or less. So that's the thing I would like you guys to <laughs> pay attention to. And um, yeah, we're back to all the uh, more working with the oil paints already actually on the canvas. But that exercise, try to sketch a little bit, like try to think about how you want to place your uh, beautiful daisies and how you want to frame that bottom part of the canvas so it looks um, so it looks like alive. And the more angles, the more different sizes of these daisies you have, the more alive it's going to look. And um, right, so here I'm continuing. Yeah, I'm just going, you know, with uh, more of a yellow part. It's a big canvas, and of course you're going to be uh, doing a lot of repetitive work with just really adding up more daisies, more petals, more like again starting with the yellow parts that's when we know where the daisies are growing and just keep on going yeah there's just a lot a lot of um, elbow grease let's say <laughs> but it's all fun it's um, yeah you, you're working um, adding up uh, starting also the yellow uh, sorry the white parts the white petals so the white petals are, uh, um, again, we are not trying to count each petal. We're starting up with a nice whitish mush. 
the whitish mush doesn't have to be very white it could be um, you know like it's all blending in a little bit you know the yellow colors get on your white and the brush I'm using one brush so there's actually some of the yellow sheet uh, color gets onto the brush so that's fine that's good because this is your um, one of the first layers for white areas of the flower for white petals and they need to get they are gonna need more shades even though the shading um, uh, it's gonna be gentle transition it's not like there's gonna be black or gray of course not but there will be we need some uh, uh, playing around with some slightly darker light colors something lighter lighter colors and so it's fine this is again just a very basic don't forget it's a very basic sketching mapping out the amount of the flowers where they're going to be how big you want them to create um, I personally uh, didn't particularly like to have them too big they reminded me of an egg <laughs> you know the sunny side up and uh, so I was trying my best to not to go into sunny side ups because otherwise it just would be like if, if you have if your white petals are too much of a mush then you really have your sunny side up so you do need some contrast some little spiky little things of the petals the white petals as well in order not to get your egg on your canvas instead of the daisy and um yeah no otherwise uh, yes just a lot of same same work Even though our uh, uh, right now our stage is very basic stage, we still want to add some light and shadows as well. And uh, in the yellow part, we want to have at least three different gradations of the uh, shading. You want to have some darker parts, which will be involving like more okra and more um, yellows, like the darker colors that go towards the bottom of the yellow areas, right? And then you have you want to have some mid tones. You want to have some highlights. Uh, you don't have to worry about highlights to stay really, really light because we're going to be adding up, of course, uh, later on, uh, adjusting how light or dark you want things to be. But you definitely want to start adding some shadows um, to the yellow part and even to. Um, the white parts of the uh, petals also as I was mentioning before you don't want to have your white to be too clean it's all right if it's a bit yellowy something you're gonna be layering up um, because we want to create um, more a very picturesque uh, painting very expressionistic so we don't want to have like a boring colors and especially when it comes to white you know you want to to have a lot of those gentle shadowy things that are happening between the petals and so here I'm just uh, showing you exactly what colors I like to use to to give some shading for the white part of the petals so there's some phthalo blue there's a bit of greenish sort of something on the on the brush on the plate there's of course titanium white a bit of crimson red we can use like just to have not not that you need purple per se but just so it's, so that your your green is not so green not not too green ish we don't want to have a gray color either so it's in between those blues and greens something and I'm adding uh, some of those, uh, some of the shading, some of that particular color in between the petals. Again, it's uh, just try to imagine where you would like some shadows to start uh, opening up a little bit. Shadows are very important, of course. They give us depth, they give us volume of the object, and we want to really, really 
give it a time, pay a little bit of attention, like how we want to place those uh, beautiful shading of the white petals, and also, of course, the yellow yellow part of the flower. Of course, it's also going to be important. It's going to be important for us to see how we could also uh, blend them together. Not blend them, blend them in terms of like a sky blending technique, but to um, create to unite them let's say how our yellow part and the white part is gonna have to become one uh, together but also not like the yellow should not uh, be cut out you know there's sometimes when you have uh, all the sides of the yellow will be all nicely clean cleanly <laughs> done with the white and the contrast is going to be the same type of contrast all around the yellow part. It's going to have a feeling that it doesn't belong to this flower. And it's like just like a very separated uh, entity in its own, by all by itself. So we are going to be later on again, of course, trying to create a certain contrast on certain parts between yellow and white, how to uh, combine them and how to make them more of a united uh, also there's one thing we want to pay attention to is the background around our uh, beautiful white petals we don't want to fill it all in with white we want to leave some of the browns or greens whatever is around that is going to be helping us to create contrast well see you guys soon